Well, hello everybody. Um, I'm going to assemble the frame uh, for my solar tracker and show you how it goes together. Uh, these are all the pieces and I'm doing it indoors because it is really hot outside right now. There's no shade and it is threatening rain. Anyway, here's all the pieces of the solar tracker laid out just like they would be disassembled for transport uh, so I could take it out to Arizona. I built it here in Florida, but it's going to go out to Arizona and be set up out there. And uh, these are all the pieces. Um, I got the big, the big wooden frame there is the part that uh, faces north. And the south side is the smaller wooden frame down here. Um, here's the drive part uh, leaning up against the red toolbox. It has the uh, antenna rotator down here that provides the drive motion and then a one inch uh, by four foot long pipe to uh, serve as the as the shaft that everything gets mounted on and rotates. Um, the electronics are housed inside this old ammo box. I got a couple of wooden braces and a couple of boxes down here. The small box has nuts, bolts, fasteners needed to put it together. The large box has the sensor head to detect where the sun is so it'll follow it and it has the uh, has the small uh, arm with the limit switches on it so here's all the bits and pieces and I'm going to start assembling it and I'll give you a look at it at various stages during the assembly oh and by the way I forgot to mention these aluminum um, rectangles over here leaning against the black toolbox those are the frames that the solar panels fit in so the solar panels are still in storage. I'll bring them out and put them in the frames when the time comes. So, so I'm going to get to assembling and I'll show you uh, various stages of the assembly. Be back. Okay, here's the main structure of the tracker, all assembled. The major uh, wood components and the drive uh, unit is installed. It goes together very quickly and easily. It's all held together with uh, half inch carriage bolts, nuts and washers, and everything's labeled. For instance, west, east, south, top, north, west, east, so that it goes together fairly easily without any confusion. Um, I also added a small platform down here just out of a piece of scrap plywood for the uh, electronics box to sit on to uh, keep it up out of the dirt and the mud. Um, at the lower end is a bearing made out of a uh, out of a pipe union, one inch pipe union and this is an old amateur astronomer's trick for building uh, telescope mounts and I'll talk more about this later but you can see I've got uh, the main one inch drive pipe here coming up to the union which is acting as a bearing then I've got a couple of uh, pipe clamps on here and a piece of, uh, of L shaped metal there to prevent it from, or Z shaped metal actually to prevent the union from loosening up. The union's not tight that's what allows it to turn and then that piece of metal and two pipe clamps prevent it from loosening up or tightening up as it turns. Then I have a, uh, a short nipple and a uh, a floor flange at the bottom. At the top I've got the old 1960's vintage antenna rotator up here and underneath I've got again a nipple and a floor flange bolted to the wooden structure and then the antenna rotator is bolted to that. That would be like the uh, fixed part of the mast that the rotator is attached to and then it would be rotating another piece of mast and for that I've got um, a four foot long one inch piece of pipe that's attached again with another nipple and, uh, and a coupler and uh, the antenna rotator is bolted onto that and rotates it and this part down here stays fixed this part here rotates and then off the back of the of the uh, antenna rotator on the end of the nipple up there I've got a uh, 90 degree elbow and I'm going to attach a counterweight to that to counterweight the uh, the uh, solar panels that are going to be out here so that the antenna rotator doesn't actually have to exert much torque to rotate them because um, by mounting the panels up on top here um, it presents an out-of-balance situation and uh, the rotator has a lot of trouble rotating it unless you counterbalance it with a counterweight off the other side. And I'll show that 
once that's installed. So I hope this is uh, understandable. There'll be a good write-up on the website and uh, some still pictures uh, to try and explain how it all goes together. But uh, this part of it goes together pretty quickly. And uh, now I can just put on the, uh, the two aluminum frames that hold the solar panels. I can put on the counterweight. And uh, then it would be time to put on the solar panels and wire everything up. So um, I'll show you some more once I get to that stage. All right, here the uh, two aluminum frames that hold the solar panels have been installed. And they're just rectangular frames made out of uh, 90 degree angle um, aluminum uh, in the same outer size uh, as the outside uh, dimensions of the solar panels. So uh, they're pretty easy to put together. And they're held in place on the pipe, on the drive pipe, with hose clamps that go through uh, notches cut in the in the um, 90 degree angle and then the hose clamps are tightened down. Now I am the first to admit that this is not an ideal solution but it's amazing how well it works. I've had this out in pretty high winds um, for days on end and it's really worked pretty well although I don't think it's a good permanent solution. I think if I had to do it again and in fact I will do it again in the future, I would probably insert a T here, actually not a T but a cross, and have maybe half inch pipes going out both ways from the center and um, attach the uh, the angles to them so that uh, just just so it's a more rigid and more permanent uh, solution to holding the solar panels in place. But um, just the pipe clamps through those notches cut in the in the angle works amazingly well for holding these frames in place. If you really tighten down on the hose clamps, um, it really works pretty well. And then in the back here, I've got the counterweight installed. It's just a 30-inch uh, piece of 1-inch pipe with a T at the end. Um, with one solar panel on it, the pipe alone works as a pretty good counterweight. With two on it, I need the T on the end. And then the motor really doesn't strain when it's uh, turning the panels throughout the whole 180 degrees of uh, rotation that can go through. So, so that's, uh, that's how far I've got it so far. I'm going to put the uh, sensor head and uh, the limit switch bar on next, and then I'll show you that. Okay, I have installed the sensor head and the limit switch bar. And the sensor head consists of two small solar cells mounted at 90 degrees to each other with an occulting bar on top. Let me see if I can get a better picture of the occulting bar. Here you can see how it's mounted. It swivels back and forth a little bit so I can fine-tune the position of the panels. And then over here you can see how the occulting bar is in front of the solar panels and it shades them. As the sun moves uh, west during the day it's gonna um, cast a shadow on the east cell and uncover uh, the west cell and eventually the voltage difference is enough for the uh, the electronics to move the motor and equalize things again. So that's what the occulting bar does. And uh, the center head is again mounted onto the uh, onto the pipe with a with another piece of uh, with, with, a, with a piece of uh, square aluminum this time rather than an angle and uh, with another hose clamp and uh, that works pretty well it's good and sturdy and then the, uh, the limit switch bar has two limit switches mounted on it another piece of uh, aluminum angle just like I made the uh, panel frames out of and uh, two momentary contact limit switches on them and the paddles on the limit switch will hit these screw heads sticking out down here on the wooden mount at the extreme ends of travel. So this is the uh, this is the west uh, this is the east side. I'm sorry. So this would be as far east as it would go in the morning, and then uh, the east limit switch would contact that screw head, and then over here in the afternoon, as far west as it can go, um, this limit switch would come down here and contact the head of that screw, and that would stop the motion at the far west end of travel. So, um, got all these wires up here. I've got wires from the sensor head, wires from the motor, wires from the uh, limit switch bar, and they all come down here and uh, tie.
tie into the control box, the electronic box, the ammo box. Um, I have um, passed through wire terminals on here so I can just uh, screw the wires right onto it. Add a battery for power, uh, the same battery that solar panels are charging through a charge controller, and um, the thing's up and running. It's taken me about 30 minutes so far to get it to this point of assembly, and that's not counting the amount of time I've stopped to, uh, to do uh, the filming. So 30 minutes is not too bad. Um, it breaks down quite small, easily transports in my truck out to Arizona. It's been there and back once. It'll go back next time. I'll probably make some uh, changes to it between then and now. Like I said, maybe putting a crossbar in the center to better support the solar panels and maybe a few other things. But uh, so far so good. I actually filmed an assembly sequence out in Arizona when I put it together for use out there and somehow managed to accidentally override it. So I'm, I'm setting it up here again in the, in the uh, workshop and uh, filming it again just so I have it for the website. Um, I'm going to grab the solar panels and put them in the frames and show you what that looks like. Be right back. Now here the uh, two solar panels I'm using have been dropped into their frames. Uh, the upper one is a 100 watt uh, commercially made unit I got a really good deal on so I snapped it up. And the bottom one is one of my uh, 60 watt homemade panels that you can find uh, instructions on how to build some elsewhere on my website. I'll provide a link to it. Um, so the panels just drop right into the aluminum frames. Um, the frames are built a little bit larger than the outside diameter of, or dimensions of the panels. So the panels just drop right in and then uh, screws hold them in place so the wind can't blow them out. And um, it works really well. Uh, it, took me, it took me less than five minutes to get to this point after the last video. Main, most of that was just carrying them from where the uh, panels are stored. So uh, they just drop right in and then uh, a few bolts on each panel to hold it in place and it's done. Then it's just a matter of wiring everything together. I'm not going to wire it all together because this is just a walkthrough of the assembly of the tracker, how it all goes together. There will be other videos on the website um, and on YouTube showing how it works in operation. All wired up um, under the sun. So uh, look for those. And um, I hope this helped you understand how my solar tracker works because I get a lot of emails, questions from people about how it works, how it goes together, what makes it go. Um, and I'm slowly but surely adding more information to the website. Now that it's working, there's going to be um, circuit diagrams. Um, there's going to be lots of still photos, a big write-up on how it all works, how the, how the, uh, the bearing down here at the bottom works, how, how I drive the, the motor everything. Um, how the sensor head works, the occulting bar, everything. It's all going to be there eventually. Just uh, be patient. Uh, give me a little time to get it all up there. And uh, um, I hope uh, some people can duplicate this. It's really simple to build. Not much to it. Um, I'm going to make some improvements over time too. There will be updates to the website. So uh, even after I get all the information on the website, check back from time to time for updates because I am going to modify it a little bit. Now they've actually used it out in the uh, field for a few days. Um, I have some ideas for changes I want to make to it. So uh, now that I've had it out in the field, actually used it out in Arizona, in the wind, in the sun. didn't actually rain on me, but I tend to go out to my uh, property out there during the drier times of month when it's very rare that it rains. But um, what would I change now that I've actually used it in the field? Well, first off, I need to... Um, I need to paint the uh, the wood to protect it from the elements because uh, it does rain occasionally out there. Uh, we're not technically in the desert, so we do get more than 10 inches of rain a year. Um, so I need to protect it from the elements with a good coat of paint. Um, also, I talked earlier about putting in the crossbar to uh, make the uh, across here in the center to make the uh, attachment of the of the panels a little bit sturdier get some shorter pieces of pipe and put in a cross in the middle and then maybe have some uh, some stub pieces of pipe come out that I can attach the frames to just to make it a little sturdier um, 
And speaking about uh, protecting from the environment, I need to get some sort of plastic dome or something over the sensor head up here. Um, that won't survive long exposed to the elements. So yeah, I need to put some sort of plastic dome or something over it to protect it. So I'm going to work on that before my next trip out west. Um, the limit switches. My brother has pointed out to me that they won't survive long, probably exposed to the elements like that. So I need to get some sealed switches probably and replace these with uh, some that can handle the environment. Otherwise they'll, they'll go bad, usually at the most inopportune moment. So i got to get some sealed limit switches. So those are about all the changes. I mean, it works remarkably well as is. It just wouldn't survive long out there in this condition. Uh, Mother Nature would tear it apart eventually. So I need to uh, basically reinforce it. So this was a... I consider this to be a prototype, a work in progress. Um, and uh, I'm very happy with how it's performing. I just need to ruggedize it now to make it into something that, that, that can be left out in, uh, in the Arizona weather for long periods of time and uh, keep working. I don't have to worry too much about ruggedizing the antenna rotator because it's designed to be exposed to the weather. That's the one part that's already thoroughly ruggedized and I don't have to do anything with it. The ammo can that holds the electronics, that's semi weatherproof. It's got a rubber seal on it. I drilled a lot of holes in it to get the wires through but um, I siliconed around them to, uh, to, to reseal them so I think that's still pretty pretty well weatherproof. But uh, it just needs to be ruggedized, and um, I think it'll be good to go for long periods of time out in the uh, Arizona sun and uh, weather and wind and occasional rain, believe it or not. Um, there will be updates and changes in the future, so watch out for those. But as it is, it works pretty darn well, and it costs very little to build. So... If you're interested in building a tracker for your solar panels, this might be one way to go for you. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. Goodbye.